Hi guys, welcome to Hope This Works. I'm Kevin, and thanks for joining me. This is the basement of our tiny house. I'm, in this video, I'm going to show you the footprint of our tiny house, what it was like when we first got here, what my plans are, and how to turn this into an effective woodworking shop and a great place to film all the videos for making sawdust. The working footprint of this basement is approximately 11 feet by 27 feet. The footprint of the house is actually larger than that. And I'm going to show you why that footprint is different. There's a few things in this basement like the mechanicals for our house, hot water heater, and forced air furnace, and some obviously some, uh, some plumbing and some electrical, and some duct work. This isn't going to be a full shop tour, but you can check those out on my second channel, and those will be set up in a series and delivered as I'm setting up this shop. So I invite you to stay tuned for that. When we first came down and come, in, come down in the basement, uh, there is some graffiti on the walls, and it's uh, it's labeled as the dungeon. This was not a perfect or ideal uh, location, but it does work really good now. I've had some help uh, from Andrew the Bearded Giant. He came all the way from Oregon and helped me get some electric put in, a couple different circuits, and I'll show you some of that, the challenge that we had to go through to get that figured out. Uh, we built this miter saw station, which will also be uh, featured on making sawdust. And we hung up some LED low profile shop lights, which are just wonderful. One of the things he helped me do is get all of my tools downstairs. Uh, the thing that I had to do before that, to prep before he came, was to make sure the basement was completely cleaned out and we had a really good blank slate to start with. Uh, one of the things I did not want to do is load all my stuff down into the basement, pack it all down in the basement, mm -hmm. and then really not have a way to work uh, to set up our shop. So Andrew was a huge help with that. Uh, we went to the Home Depot and picked up some melamine uh, countertop material or shelving material, which is awesome. I got a good deal on some of that, and we built this miter saw station. The reason I wanted to start here first is coming down the stairwell, uh, any long material is going to be cut up into uh, shorter workable pieces. So this was really the first place I wanted to start, is build this miter station. And this was going to allow me to build the rest of my benches along the perimeter. Now behind you, is our miter station and we are facing to the other end of the shop right now my plan is to build in more benches 16 feet of bench this way with the melamine countertop that I have and also build it close to the foundation wall this is actually a dirt foundation house uh, there are three there's three courses of cinder block and then a cement foundation and I will show you that and that was part of the challenge that we had to overcome uh, this house was originally built on a slab and then lifted up at some later date and excavated to pour some footings and sit on an actual cinder block foundation and then they came in and dug out this basement so it is a dirt floor dirt walls and that's why the footprint of this shop is actually smaller than the footprint of our house. So one of those challenges is, how do I set up my benches in an effective way to not decrease uh, the usable footprint of my shop? So in a future video, we're going to be building benches up over this oh, kind of makeshift retaining wall that you are that you're seeing over here. I don't believe we're going to have any erosion issues. The basement is bone dry. Uh, it's sand and bentonite clay, so it's really a hard material. So um, 
the house is not going to sink or the, the dirt walls are not going to erode over the course of time that we're living here. Uh, this is a rental house, so uh, what our main plan is to get a wood, our main plan is to get an effective and efficient woodworking shop to raise finances so we can move on to uh, either a larger rental house or, or purchase some property in the future. So this is not going to be the permanent location for Hope This Works or Making Sawdust, uh, but we do have to make it work. So. This bench right here was in the basement when we started. I will probably use a lot of this material and continue these benches using this melamine material and come up some, with some effective storage solutions underneath uh, for all my tools. I've got a lot of stuff. Uh, I am going to place my radial arm saw somewhere in this corner location near the camera. I will also place my lunchbox planer right in this area that you can actually see down on the floor back there. And then I will also have my table saw bench assembled. Um, I took that from the old wood shop, but I'm not going to assemble it yet because I want to be able to have all my benches at the correct height. And the dirt floor is not completely level. It's actually higher in this back area than it is where the camera and the miter saw station are sitting. So I'll be building an L-shaped bench all the way across here, and then we will figure out how I need to assemble my table saw and assembly bench. One of the things that we had to do, this is my drill press. Now obviously, uh, the sewer pipe that comes out of the floor from upstairs, and also a beam that's holding up her house. So our thought was build a platform right in this area up above the sewer pipe so it was not resting on top of the sewer pipe. Andrew had a really good idea with that. Uh, it's kind of, kind of straddles the PVC pipe. And it also is a good location for the drill press. Right there is the future sticker wall. Obviously, we have my little Hope This Works dude and the bearded giant on the cold air return of the furnace. That gives you a really good view right there, guys, of the foundation and the dirt wall and that uh, the piece of plywood is actually effectively holding back some dirt. Uh, we are not going to disturb that too much, but we have done also, Andrew, Andrew and I uh, made a little platform for my shop smith right there, which works out really well. Our water main is right there, so I really didn't want to disturb uh, the copper pipe supply or anything for the main supply of our house or disturb that meter. So we left that pallet right there, which that copper is attached to. Um, I would hate to bump into that and spring a leak. Obviously, there's a little bit of graffiti on some of these walls. And I'm certainly going to paint over a lot of that. There's a lot of lumber left over in the basement uh, that actually is, is pretty nice. Uh, one by four, one by eights, uh, quite a few two by sixes down on the other end there. We're gonna work on that. That's good material. What we're gonna try to do is build my benches over top of the retaining wall there, the makeshift retaining wall. Like I said, one of the challenges that we had to overcome, Andrew and I, was expanding our service panel, our electric service panel. So we run some wire 
we actually expanded two circuits one that's operate controlled by the light switch and one that operates all my tools I have a 20 amp circuit to run all my tools and I am a, uh, a one-man show down here so I'm not gonna be running all the tools at the same time and none of my tools are gonna draw that much so I do also have some expansion for some dust collection, which I do have to get kind of creative with that. One of the other things Andrew has helped me do, obviously quite a few light sockets, electric sockets there. Uh, a few things I do want to do. One thing I did not notice is when we were planning this out that I probably should have this electric outlet there moved up closer to the top. Andrew had a brilliant idea of a tape measure holder using an old paint stick. Most likely that will stay. One of the other things that we have done is hang these are four foot light fixtures with tons of cobwebs. That's uh that's gonna be a one of the projects I need to complete. These are all LED lights i actually have six of these lights hanging in here and it is incredibly bright one of the challenges that i had in the last shop is i did not have enough lighting so i'm gonna have lighting above all my benches good lighting above my table saw and also good lighting above my shopsmith so Big shout out to Andrew the Bearded Giant for coming and helping me. It was a long trip for him, but we are good friends, and it was just an absolute blessing. So thanks guys for joining me here. I hope this works in the tour of the basement. I hope that was helpful for you guys to, to see what we have going on down here in our tiny house. Uh, stay tuned. We're going to be setting this up. I'm going to be delivering more instructional type content, project builds, tips and tricks on my Making Sawdust channel. If you've not already checked that out, why don't you go over there and watch that video right there. That's one of my better performing videos on that channel. And as always, hope this works.